Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Blue Maxima and I'm here checking out Bastion, or the Bastion, or... How do you say Bastion or Bastion? Probably Bastion, but... Nevertheless, three games came out today and that kind of annoyed me because I paid all my bills and I'm a little bit low on cash right now. And of course I have to go and release three bloody games so I have to send an email and wait for responses to come back. Thankfully, the Supergiant were actually manning the cannons and were able to fire off a review code back at me. So I got this right away and I, well, I'm doing this video right now because I've got about an hour and a half in the story mode. So we're just going to go and continue the story mode. There's not that much to talk about in terms of options. You've got brightness. And it's probably a good idea just to put that at absolute maximum or just a little bit lower if your eyes are a little bit sensitive to that. But otherwise, you've got subtitles and it's probably a good idea to turn those on too. But nevertheless, let's just hit continue. As I said, I've played about an hour and a half so far and this is the second time I tried recording this because I ended up in a bloody wave-based survival mode by accident. I'm probably not going to do that again. But nevertheless, the loading times in this game aren't fantastic. They are a bit slow. Especially considering that if you want to try things like the challenges over and over again, you have to go back to the Bastion and then go back to the challenge in question, which takes two different loads. So the loading times can be a bit of a pain. I do not want to smoke that pipe because if I do, I'll get thrown into a um, bloody survival challenge again. So we can bring little knickknacks to these guys. And they're supposed to talk about them, but for some reason there's... Zolf brought his antique there smoking is. pipe all the way from the terminals. So yeah, the narrator will talk to you about a lot of stuff, and he's actually really pleasant to listen to. So this is the Bastion, which is our hub area, and we, if we collect the power cores, we can put them in the monument. Zolf's travels ain't much compared to what the kids And we can actually build new stuff. So if we come here, we can build a memorial, and... This will let us use vigils. Be a kick and pay respect to the old world. So, let's see, we actually get a reward from that, so we can get money from um, completing these vigils. Earn first prize in the priving grounds, defeat three foes, yada 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 yada. So they're basically like trophies that give you bonus Words money. And you've got other things you can do, like we can come here to buy a lot of upgrade materials or tonics or new abilities and all that, but we won't bother with that for the time being. Over here we've got the tonics section and we can come in here and apply different tonics to us which will give us different abilities so for example i've got ten, plus 10 max health health tonics restore all my health and absorbing stray fragments because i don't need the rest but there are other ones that are slightly more interesting in there like you've got one one plus one chance to carry on if defeated and you've got 100 percent critical hit chance if you're pretty badly hurt and there are other ones you can buy in the lost and found and over here we've got the arsenal, so we can pick our weapons here. I'm going to stay with the war machete and the scrap musket, because they're my preferred weapons at the moment. But you keep getting a lot of new weapons, and they keep getting swapped out, and new abilities as well. So, you've got, the, you've got things like mirror shields, the trip mine, which you just throw on the floor, the squirt law, which makes some enemies friendly to you, and all sorts of other things, especially ones that are weapon specific. So, you've got a lot of options to go with. Again, I'm going to stick with the war machete and the scrap yeah, musket because I like them. Quick work for that and you've also got the forge, where if you find the relative, if you find the right weapon materials, you can upgrade them. So, for example, here with the cow hammer, if I spend 250 shards, I can get plus 50% damage or plus 10% critical hit chance, and I can pick either one, and then they'll unlock the next set of upgrades. So, if I come over here, for example, I've got the I've got two upgrades on the breaker's bow and I can swap them pretty much at any time. That's that's pretty cool. So you can come in and customize your gameplay style whenever you like. So we'll just head out to the sky bridge now and this will show us where all the levels are. I've completed a fair few of them, but there's a fair few more, obviously. I've unlocked like four proving grounds at this point, and there's like seven of them as I showed off earlier in the video. So these these proving grounds are things that let you go and do like specific weaponry. So I'll just show one of these off and then we'll come back and we'll do an actual stage. Because why not, right? Loading times. Yep, you have to go through two of these every time you want to go to a new level. And it's kind of annoying, especially since... There are some occasions where you might want to just go straight to the next level without worrying about upgrading a new weapon you just got Always or something. So the loading times get a little bit on your nerves, but whatever. So the way these work is that you've got these cages here. 
and if you finish the stages quick enough or with not enough shots or anything in particular along, along those lines, you will get the rewards for them. Very good. So anyway, this is this is Bastion, and despite the fact that the performance literally just tanked there for like no bloody reason, the game actually runs pretty damn well like 90% of the time. The technical performance is mostly very good. I haven't run into too many problems with it, so it's a bit weird to see it just screwing up like this. So the idea of this one obviously is just to defeat all of these bastards as quickly as possible and try not to fall off the edge because I'm a bloody idiot. But anyway... So the game's combat system is very simple in concept. It's got it's got depth. Don't get me wrong. It's just a very simple con it's just a very simple system to understand. So you've got two weapons that you can equip at any one time, and a special ability on the R button, which I can't show off at the moment because I'm not since I'm in the challenge. I can't actually use my special ability. I've got to use the war machine. The war machine, I should say. Is, it, it's a war machine, but it's also a machete. It's kind of confusing. But nevertheless. I'm just trying to throw these bloody machetes, but these things just keep moving out of the way at the most inconvenient of times, and I've kind of I've missed my window to get the upgrade, so oh well. It's, a, it's only a little bit of a demonstration, but yeah. You've got two weapons that can be used at any one time, and a special ability on the R bomb, which requires a black tonic, which you can see up in the top left corner there in the HUD next to the blue potions, which are the healing tonics. Unfortunately, I didn't get anything, so I have to go back to the Skyway, but instead of taking me back to the level select, it takes me back to the Bastion, so I have to go back to the Skyway, and that's another loading time to load into the new level, which is kind of annoying, but... Oh, uh, well. And you've also got a dodge move and a block move. Block move doesn't block everything, and, and dodge move isn't very good at dodging much, and so every enemy has a... Uh, good way to be defeated, whether it be short range or long range attacks. There's like no bonus or anything, it's just, you know, you want to stay away from the ones that will just be constantly like spinning around in circles. So we'll go play this stage that I haven't played yet. Hopefully I, ha I don't end up finishing the game on this video because this is a fairly short game from what I remember. It only goes for like three to four hours, but there are things like endless like survival modes, score attack modes, and then there's a bunch of other like combat arenas with m multiple modifiers that can give a little bit of extra longevity. These days. No time for it either. The narrator follows you around and he narrates everything you do. Kid says a little prayer anyway. Couldn't hurt, right? Folks used to make pilgrimage here to pay their respects to Piff, the bull. Well, the gods are long gone now, and the orchard core is long gone too. The narrator follows you around and makes commentary about the world and comments on what you're doing. And he is actually quite amazing. It's it's a very lightweight presentation of the game's storyline. The game's story is basically the Bastion's been screwed up and you need to go figure out what the bloody hell's wrong with it. And the game is just... The gods don't care about trinkets, but the kid ain't no god. The game is just like, really, really good at having a minimalistic presentation of its world, and its audio-visual design is bloody gorgeous. For something once. Something real. Waiting for the bloody music to start up. It's got no music going on for some reason. I'm picking terrible times to look at these game. Look at this game. Bloody hell. But anyway, we keep finding things like upgrade materials and stuff like that. They're often hidden off the beaten path. But yeah, the game's audio-visual design is great. The game's visual aesthetic is gorgeous. Just everything floating in from the bottom is just... It just looks amazing. Also, that's an enemy. That's an enemy I haven't fought yet. That's not very good at all. I'll just... I'll just I'll just fire at him with all, all my bloody musket bullets, but yep. So what's this shrine? Press X to invoke the gods. Oh, so this is the idols. So, as we can see, these are the modifiers. And if we turn all that M on, we get extra money and extra... If we turn that on, we get extra money and XP, but at the same time, the game's a lot harder. So yeah, as, as we can see, here comes some actual combat with stuff that isn't these... Well, these bloody small things like to show up a lot, don't they? But anyway, here comes the music. Yeah, game's music is fantastic. 
deck just to make it just to make its visual flair more interesting. It's a very fast paced game too. The combat is very quick and you can very easily lose all your health in like an instant if you aren't careful. I kind of hate that the dodge doesn't seem to have any invincibility frames. It's just that it just gets you out of the way, but and I can deal with that. But yeah, the combat is very fast and there are lots of different enemies with lots of different strategies. So it's very engaging and you end up spending a lot of time just beating the absolute shit out of everything. Block of that again. And as I said before, the game's performance is usually fine. It's just just recently that the performance has been dropping a little bit. Jesus. Don't know why it's so... Why well, insisted on dropping here and now, but oh well. But yeah, as you can see, there is some depth to the combat. If you time your blocks right, you will counter counter attacks and if and there are lots of different things you can do, like for example, I just get out of the way, I can throw a machete at these, which gets rid of them. And I get the free monies. Kid ain't found the core, at least he found Zolf's precious shrine. So I didn't get the core, but I got the shrine, and if I come through here, there might be a secret. Places a dead end in more ways than one. Maybe not. <laughs> Just fall off the edge of the world, because I'm an idiot. But yeah, that was an example of a leveling faster. The levels are actually quite short. A few minutes long, and you'll often get at least one new thing with them. So yeah, it looks like my next building that I'm going to get for the Bastion is the shrine. But yeah, the levels are quite short, and the story is told very lightweight, in a very lightweight way as well. It has a lot of subtext to it, at least I think it does, because I can't tell subtext, so usually I assume if there's something I'm missing in a story, it's probably the fact that I'm missing subtext. Nevertheless, yeah, I could probably build a shrine there if I wanted to. So I'm going to have to talk to you, aren't I? Oh, that's cute. So you get, you get friendly bastards showing up from time to time, and it's just a very minimalistic game overall, really. I mean, like, the combat's the most complicated thing about it. Let's see. Uh, Alright, we'll go do another stage, because why not? Not much else we can do, really. But yeah, the game, the game is a hell of an experience. Just when you add the super fast combat, the lovely art style, the great music, and the sound effect choices, it all just binds together into something that's really nice and really minimalistic, all things considered. The Langston River flowed free and wild the it's not as complicated as other games that I've seen on the Vita, but there's a sort of loving simplicity to the whole game's combat where you just, you've got two weapons that usually only do one or two things a piece and a dodge button and an R button attack and that's basically it, go kill stuff, and a, and a block and a dodge. It doesn't do much more than it has to, and at the same time, it's actually, it actually works in its favour. The game's combat is very fast, and it's a hell of a lot of fun, because it, it's just nice and simple. And considering how many different kinds of upgrades there are, and how many weapons there are, you can very easily pick your own type of combat. So you want to go like purely long range with like two long range weapons, you can do that. You want to go purely short range with a war machine and a hammer, go right ahead. There are probably more weapons later on that I should probably just block these. So if you... You can pick whatever combat you want to do, and again, there are challenges which actually get you, like, relevant upgrades for your stuff. And, you know, you go you go looking for the upgrades, and the upgrade... You can pick two different upgrades, so you can pick your combat style, like, you can go pure damage, or you can go, like, crit chance. Again, it's very simple. At least in concept. And execution is definitely not as simple. But the simplicity works for it. The combat's fun, even if I feel like I'm just rolling around it. Great, my capture kit's actually having a fit at this game. Who would have thought? Just give it, give it a minute. It should recover. 
Maybe it won't recover. Oh, there it goes. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure why it's why Bastion's making this get making this kit throw up, but oh well. So I might as well show off my R button ability because oh god. There we go. You die now. Oh no, it just circled around the back and hit me for trying to be cheeky about it. Let's tr let's pull out the Breaker's Bow and the Kale Hammer just for a little bit of extra demonstration. And how about the Whirlwind? Because why not? So now we've got the bow. If we pull back for long enough, we can increase its damage. And if we release it at exactly the right time, we'll get some bonus damage as well. So that would be good. I don't actually have that many upgrades applied to this one, so... This is going to be a little bit of a dick, but there we go. So yeah, you can pick whatever kind of combat style you like. Oh god. I'm going to have to run back the way I came, aren't I? The game tends to do this from time to time. It just makes you run for it. But it's fast, it's furious, and it's minimalistic style of combat works really well for it. The story is interesting, if not a bit lightweight. Oh, these are these are friendly to me. All right, I better not attack them. And I have to admit, I really like the short stages because on every stage they've done something slightly different to make the game more interesting. Like on this stage here, where defending this barge and on another stage we're making a run for our lives and it's always constantly introducing new stuff like the shrine just got introduced and there's always a new weapon or a new kind of item or a new building that you can get on every stage and it really is just quite it really is just quite varied it keeps you interested despite the fact that the game is arguably fairly simple it still manages to keep you entertained by just constantly introducing new stuff, which I like quite a lot. Oh, Jesus. Oh, grenade. Oh, well, no, that's not actually my grenade anymore. Never mind, I'll just... Whoops. I fell off the edge. I'm gonna be now I got a recovery mid air now. Not good. Yeah, the game is mostly great. That was the kit, not the game. And... It runs really well, it's got a nice style. It's got a really nice style. I like listening to the narrator purely because he's just got something interesting to say about the world or the state of it. And it's just a really good game. That's pretty much all I've got to say about it. The combat is fun, fast paced, and it's just the the presentation is just really, really good. Like, I've got nothing else. I really don't. It's just, that's... That's pretty much it. And it's got plenty of extra content, too, considering there's a bunch of combat gauntlets you can unlock, and you can get all sorts of different items to make the game harder, so you can... It encourages multiple playthroughs. Spin to win. Because why not? This is actually one of the longest stages. I've never seen it do a mid-stage load. That's new. Wow, this video has been going for 20 minutes. I should probably end it off at some point. Why go to Prosper Bluff? Fairly good question. Why am I here? I used to take an enterprise Yeah, Bastion. Good game. Really good game. Like, pretty damn amazing game, honestly. I know I'm not saying that excited about it, but... It is a good game. Bloody hell. Really is. Moves really quick. Looks really nice. Has a mostly good technical port. 
And it's actually really cheap right now because they launched it at $2.99, which is insane. Like, this game's like normal price is something along the lines of 15 bucks. And releasing it for like $3 and you get the PS4 version with it, if you have one of those, is completely insane. And it's also got like cross buy and all that. Cross buy, cross save. There is no cross play because, you know, it's a bloody single player game, but. Still really, really good nonetheless. I mean, for 15 bucks, I'd say yes. And for three bucks, I'd say absolutely. Good lord. I mean, like, what more do you need? Oh, hit that switch. Right, that opens that gate. So I imagine if I run through here, it'll close behind me. No, but whatever. I'll keep moving. Whoops, that's a dead end. God, just the, everything just flowing up from under it is just a really cool little thing. It's just it's fun to watch. Oh, so we found another character, the singer. And I am very close to the end of the game, judging by the trophy list when I took a look at it earlier. So, pretty sure the video will end here after a look at the little cutscene that shows up. So that was a look at the Bastion. Or Bastion. Why do I call it... What? If they call it the Bastion. Come on, give me a break. But... <laughs> we darn near celebrated. Yeah, Bastion's Vita port is very good. The majority of frame rate drops you saw there were my kit bugging out of the game for some reason. I really don't know why that happened. But the game's performance is really good the majority of the time. And the game's combat is great, if a little bit simplistic, but plenty of variety to go around. The game keeps it interesting. The art style is amazing. The narrator is fun to listen to. The story is very lightweight and it's got a unique little bit of charm to it. And considering that the game's only $3 at the moment, well, well worth your time. Absolutely. This has been Blue Maxima and I'll see you all next time.